So hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I've got a really cool project for us today, and that's building a fully animated, fully interactive line chart using Expo, Victory Native, and React Native Skia. In the past, I've made line charts before just using D3 and Skia, but I no longer think that's the right approach for the majority of, of cases. I think most of the time, if you're building a standard line chart, you're gonna to wanna to be reaching for Victory Native and just customizing it at the edges with React Native Skia, wherever you need a little extra um, dosage of flair. I wouldn't reach for D3 unless everything that you're doing is just entirely custom and can't be done in uh, Victory Native or something like that. As always, uh, the GitHub link's down in the description if you get stuck and you wanna see my sample code. But other than that, uh, please like and subscribe and let's get started. All right, so before we do any coding, Let's talk about how all the different pieces of Victory Charts come together to get everything to work. So at its base, Victory Charts is really just a Skia canvas. Within the Skia canvas though, we get a nice component which gives us chart superpowers called the Cartesian Chart Component. And basically, we feed the Cartesian Chart our data our axis keys, and a reference to our gesture state. And it will spit out for us the points that we need and the bounds of the actual canvas, which is really nice. So within Victory Charts, we also get some nice utility components. One of course being the line, which we're gonna use today, but not just the line, we also get the area, which is the space under the line that we fill in with that gradient. And what we do is we use the points and the bounds in order to construct this. Now here's the cool part where Skia comes in uh, with our tooltip, is that we aren't limited to just these utility components that are given to us by Victory. To make the tooltip today, we're just gonna be using a normal Skia circle. And we're gonna use the X and Y points that come from the state to position it where it needs to be. And of course the state is one of our superpowers that comes from the Cartesian chart. Okay, so that's everything on a high level. I'm gonna to try to refer back to this as we go through uh, the tutorial, but here it is for now, and I hope this will get us started. Quick heads up guys, before we get started, you're gonna to wanna to add a few dependencies to your project. But to do this, you'll need React Native Reanimated, React Native Gesture Handler, React Native Skia, and Victory Native. All these things have their place with what we're doing today, and they're also peer dependencies for the Victory Native charts. So please do that and come back here. Okay, so let's do some coding. The first thing I wanna do is just get us acquainted with our little boilerplate here. Uh, really, it's just a screen that has two boxes, Right now this button does absolutely nothing. There's no chart on the screen and uh, really nothing that interesting going on. Uh, I have some data here as well. Um, I literally just generated this uh, with a bunch of random numbers. This is really similar to the victory chart documentation if you've seen that. Normally you get your data from a backend or an API, but because I don't have that for this project, I just generate some random numbers for you guys. Uh, one other thing you'll wanna know too is that I have a couple fonts here. With React Native Skia, it's a little harder to get access to the system fonts, uh, so I just imported a couple of them. Other than that, uh, I just have some colors. Nothing else here is really that special or that notable. Okay, so for the next step, if you guys remember, uh, we had our Skia canvas and our Cartesian chart. Uh, these two actually come together. As soon as you add in the Cartesian chart, it gives you the Skia canvas. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create this chart and we're gonna add in our data our axis and our state. That way we can make use of the points and bounds. So let's do that really quickly now. So within the box, we're gonna put our Cartesian chart. And inside the chart, we're gonna say our data is gonna be equal to uh, the data that we imported. We're gonna make our X key equal to the day. We're gonna make our Y keys equal to the high temp TMP. 
we're gonna make our domain padding. Three, so we have a little space at the top. Next, we're gonna fill in our axis options. These are, of course, our font, our label color that we had above, as well as our line color. Finally, uh, we're gonna leave the rest uh, a little bit for now. Oh, you see there's an error with font. That's because I forgot to make it into a Skia font. You can do that by just saying use font and throwing in the one you wanna use along with the font size that you wanna use, which in our case right now is 12. And I think it has no children, so Cartesian chart is kind of yelling at us, which is fine. We can uh, leave that for a second. So within here, we get that nice uh, callback function that I talked about earlier. And if I could pull up my diagram for a second, I can show you. Uh, so basically, like I said, we give it the data and the axis. I'll come back to state a little bit later, but for now, we get the points and the bounds that we can use to build the line in the area. So let's do that, and we'll start with the line. And we're going to import the line from... Oh, the line's already imported above, but we imported it from victory charts. As far as the points go, we're going to use points.hightemp. I'm going to make the color light green, just because it looks nice. I'm going to make the stroke width, it's going to be 3. And finally, I'm going to add a little bit of animation, because we're going to need it later. The type of it's going to be a timing, and the duration is going to be 500 milliseconds. So if I reload, we should hopefully uh, see something, so let me do that now. And as you can see, uh, we have a nice line chart and we're started. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do is make that nice little area under the chart that you saw earlier. Really quickly before I do that though, I realized I didn't explain where day and high temp came from. Uh, they came from the data that we generated here. Uh, day is gonna be the X axis, high temp is gonna be the Y axis. And this is basically where I got it from. Uh, there's no magic there. It's just whatever keys you want on your JSON object. Okay, so next thing that I have to do is create an area, which I'm also gonna import from Victory Native. The points here are actually the exact same points that we're using above. After this, I have a Y0, which is kind of where you want the bottom of it to be. And I'm gonna use the chart bounds dot bottom for this. Finally, I'm also gonna steal this animation here and I'll put everything inside a fragment so that React stops yelling at me. All right, at this point, what I'm also gonna do is because this is based on React Native Skia, I can use things that Skia gives us. So Skia gives us this nice linear gradient we can use. And inside here, I can say I want it to start uh, at the vector location chart bounds dot bottom and I'll give the second value value of 200 because it looks nice there and that I want it to end at the coordinates of chart value bottom chart value bottom and for my colors what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a color of green and then the second color is going to be kind of more uh, transparent green and as you can see we now have the area with our nice transparent background. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is animate the chart. And this is a lot easier than you might think it is. Uh, really all we have to do is create a use state. And that's gonna have use chart data as the data and use chart data as, sorry, set chart data as the set. And in the use state, we're just gonna initialize it to the original data value. Instead of using the data from the import, we're gonna just paste that one there. And then in our button, we're gonna pass in the chart data 
and then we're going to use set chart data for our use state. So this is pretty simple. Uh, really all that happens is I say here, if it's the data one, make it the data two and then vice versa. All you do is, is change the set state data and it will flip the chart from one value to the other. Cartesian chart just takes care of all the rest for you. So there's nothing to worry about. So now if I click update chart, you see it automatically changes the axis for us and does all the animations. Okay, so the next task we have up for us is to create the actual tooltip. Uh, if you remember within the Cartesian chart, we can give it a reference to state and that state will give us the X and Y coordinates that we need in order to create the tooltip. So let's do that now. We're gonna say const state and is active equals the use chart press state. And in here, we're gonna start our X value at zero. And we're gonna say our Y is going to be equal to the high temp value at zero. So we can just plug this state now into the Cartesian chart. And we can use that to make the tooltip. So our tooltip now is going to have to take in the X and Y values. And I'll just give a quick type here. X is going to be a shared value of type number. And Y is going to also be a shared value of type number. Oops. Okay, and inside of here, we're gonna return a ski a circle. And the circle is gonna have a CX value of the X coordinate. It's gonna have a CY value of the Y coordinate and it's gonna have a color of gray and an opacity of 0 0.8, which should hopefully show uh, quite nicely. So in here, what we're gonna do is, at the bottom, we're gonna say, if the touch is active, what we're gonna do is we're gonna return that component, otherwise we're gonna return uh, null, so we're not gonna show anything. So inside of is active, we're gonna to say tooltip. And the tooltip X is gonna be equal to the state dot X. And the Y is gonna be equal to the state dot Y dot high temp dot position. And actually this should be state dot X dot position. That's why that was yelling at me. All right, so let me reload and let's see if this worked at all. So I'm gonna click. And as you can see, I got an error. The error is because I forgot to give the circle a size. I'll give it a size eight, that I think should look nice. And if I reload again, hopefully we'll have a little more luck. All right, so after reloading, you can see that if I click and drag, I get the nice tool tip, as you can see there. All right, so last thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add that nice text in the top left-hand corner that tells you what the value is at any given time. In order to do this, we're gonna first need a little bigger font. So we're gonna call this the second one chart font. This is gonna be the title and we're gonna use enter bold for this and we're gonna give it a size of 30 so that it really stands out. We're also gonna to have to compute the value of what we want that to be. And we want it to recompute as we're dragging. So in order to do that, we need a derived value from React Native Reanimated. And basically inside here, oh, sorry, as a dependency, we need the state, of course. But inside here, we're gonna return a dollar value with temp dot value and then we're going to round it to sorry dot value one more time and then we're going to round it to two decimal places so inside of here actually before we do that we need to import skia text 
not the normal React Native text, but Skia text. And at the top, we're going to add our SK text. And our XK text is going to have a X value that's going to be equal to the chart bounds dot left plus 10. So it's going to be just a little bit off from where the farthest left side is. The Y value is just going to be 40 from the top. So nothing too crazy there. Font is going to be the chart font that we had earlier. The text is going to be equal to the text we just calculated. So we call that value. The color is going to be the label color that we use for the rest of the chart. And the style is going to be fill. So let's have a look. And as we can see, it appears at the top, but we probably don't get a value yet. The reason is we just got to reload. So after reloading, if I click and drag, as you can see, we get that nice dollar value at the top and the chart animates just as we like. And we can click and drag and change that value for any time we want. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, happy hacking.